What if artificial intelligence could generate any photograph, graphic design, or work of art with stunning realism that mirrors that of a human creator's efforts in only a mere matter of seconds? Believe it or not, this is not fantasy, and in fact, the future is now, because all of those images you just saw and these many more that are like it were generated using AI and what is known as Dolly. So in this video, I'm going to talk about what Dolly is, what you can do with it, maybe some of the pitfalls behind this technology, and why I think photography and a lot of creative fields are about to change in ways we could have never conceived before. So first and foremost, what is Dolly? Dolly is an artificial intelligence system developed by the company OpenAI that can take a textual description of an image or art and generate a completely original work from that. Yes, this is not like a Google search of some sort where you're just pulling a bunch of pre-existing images and trying to find the best one that meets your criteria. Dolly is actually using its tens of billions of images it's been trained against to form a completely original picture for whatever you've described. And yes, as those early examples in this video showed, this includes actual photographs, various different forms of graphic design and sort of renders of images, and of course actual artwork itself. Now technically Dolly as it's known today is really Dolly 2, which is a more advanced version of this that OpenAI has now developed. As someone that's a technologist and a videographer and photographer myself, I've been waiting a long time to get my hands on this. OpenAI has just released their public beta of Dolly to a number of people and are starting to grant access to folks that have signed up over the coming weeks. Now I signed up for Dolly a few months ago and just got access within the past couple days, and yes, I've been heavily, and I mean heavily, digging into this just to see what exactly it can do. Now, I will leave links in the description below if you want to read more about the different technical details of Dolly or sign up yourself. With that being said, Dolly is not the only game in town for this. There are others such as Crayon, which used to be known as Dolly Mini, I believe until the creators of Dolly asked them to change this, which does a very similar image generation system. You also have Midjourney, which operates entirely through Discord at this point. Google is now even developing their own system known as Imogen or Imagine that will essentially do the same thing. As of the time of recording this video, many of these other AI systems are either in sort of more primitive forms and not quite up to the level of Dolly's quality yet, or perhaps aren't even open to the public yet at this point. So I think Dolly, for those that are really interested in playing with this technology, is the best route to go. So without further ado, let's go through some actual real-world examples here and show how Dolly works. All right, so here I am in the main interface of Dolly, as you can see. They provide a number of pre-existing examples that you can try to generate or regenerate yourself if you need sort of a starting point to experiment with. Now when you do sign up for Dolly, you start with 50 free credits that you can use to generate images. Each of those credits essentially represents one image generation. Now when you run out of credits, you can purchase new ones at a rate of 115 credits for $15. So something you'll want to keep in mind depending on how much you're intending to use Dolly or test it out. So one of the most powerful things I think Dolly can do is actually in the realm of photographs. And I want to put this to the test in a bit just to show what this can do. So let's say I'm a cinematographer and I'm looking to storyboard an idea of some sort and generate different images that represent different scenes of a film that I'm making. I have an idea in my head for a photo of a mysterious man wearing a suit, sunglasses, and a top hat sitting alone in a diner eating breakfast. And I want some green tint lighting because that's just what I'm feeling. Typically, Dolly takes around 15 seconds to generate the images and it will give you four options which you can choose from. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. So as you can see here, Dolly has generated a bunch of different options to choose from. I'm sort of trying to see which one I think represents this idea the best. On my passing glance, I want to say this looks pretty close to what I'm looking for. In fact, this is really, really, really cool. So I'm going to say I'm going to go with this. I'm going to just save it here. Now, once you do save an image, Dolly will add it to your collection, so you can always go back to this and look at it and use it for whatever purpose. As you can see here, Dolly generates a one-by-one -one aspect ratio image at a resolution of 1024 by 1024 pixels. So again, not true resolution that compares to an actual DSLR or mirrorless camera here when it comes to photographs, but certainly something that's going to be of a decent quality for a lot of uses. So now I have a couple options here I can do with this image, right? I can go to edit and basically keep amending the textual description or actually try to erase a different area to have Dolly regenerate parts of it. In this case, what I'm going to say is the edit is fine, but I want to try to generate new variations on this image to see what else Dolly can come up with that's very similar to this one. So I'm just gonna click on variations here and let's see what Dolly comes up with. And wow, okay, yeah, these are also really good. <laughs> 
Yeah, I just can't believe how good some of these are. So yeah, this one actually looks really good. Definitely a little more in the style of a painting. We'll talk about some of the different pitfalls with Dolly in a moment here, but I am really impressed with some of the different options here that Dolly has given us. So here you'll see in my collections, I can go back to the ones that I've saved and it will actually show the original prompt that I used. If I wanna say, reference that again and try to edit it and refine it a bit. So I'm going to go back, paste in my previous prompt and edit it ever so slightly. We're gonna change this now to a woman wearing a suit, sunglasses and a top hat sitting alone in a fine restaurant, eating a steak, in this case perhaps, and we'll say with a teal and orange look. And we'll use the word cinematic, because why not? And what? <laughs> I can't believe how good some of these are, honestly. This is ridiculous. <laughs> That one's actually really, really good here, as you can see. This one looks a little more like a fine painting, you might say, depending on some of the others. Yeah, this one, you can definitely see some differences here in the face. Again, very different looks with some of these, and some of them are more convincing than others in terms of how they've rendered them and what Dali's tried here, but honestly, this is still really impressive. So as you can see, for generating different ideas for storyboards and other things, and just as sort of a tool to sort of spark the creative process, Dali is definitely really impressive in this regard. But I wanna show some other areas too, of course, where Dali can shine. So let's say, instead Instead, I want to now do a corporate headshot of a middle-aged bald man in an office building. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> again, I'm like really impressed by some of these. This is ridiculously good. Now, again, you can see some interesting things here. Dali's done. It's given him different colored eyes in this particular case. You have some of these that are, you know, a bit more artistic maybe than others in terms of maybe cutting off part of the head. I don't know that that would be a great headshot per se, but this one is really impressive. I'm going to probably go with this one if I had to pick one specifically. And so now I want to go with something slightly different here to see what Dolly can do. I'm going to change this to a portrait headshot of a woman wearing glasses in an office building. In this case, also with some photography-based attributes tacked onto the end here. So let's see if Dolly can take an 85 millimeter lens and an f1.4 aperture and know to give it sort of the right compression and shallow depth of field for this kind of shot. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean, honestly, a lot of these options, in fact, the, actually, this is probably the best one if I had to just give a guess personally. This has the right compression in the background, the shallow depth of field. Again, you can see some of the detail kind of lose out when you get to some of these different variations in certain cases, but I am really impressed with what I'm seeing here. So now think about this from the perspective of stock imagery. Could something like Dolly actually replace a lot of different stock photography types of options that exist out there? This is all really interesting to think about in a lot of different ways. So one of the other things Dolly can do is actually generate variations of an image that you upload and provide to it. So just to give this a go, let's take this photograph of a cupcake that I took earlier this year at a different private party event. Now, of course, first we do have to crop our image in a one by one aspect ratio, as you can see. So we will definitely do that. And then let's see what Dolly can generate from this. Okay, not bad, not bad. Certainly different aspects of realism here that I would say, depending on what image I'm looking at, but it certainly generated many similar images to the original that I took. And you can definitely see it taking on a lot of the color characteristics, sort of the shallow depth of field aspects with how I focused on the cupcake when I took it. And so I would say Dolly has a good general sense of the images you provide it and can usually generate some pretty relevant iterations on that. But now I'm going to give Dolly something slightly more complex here in terms of a real estate photo that I took that is part of just some of my general samples of real estate images. And so we're going to see how this carries over to more complex images that I provided. Interesting, okay. Yeah, so this is definitely... <laughs> One of the areas maybe where Dolly has strengths and weaknesses, I might say. Some of these for sure are going to look a bit more realistic than others, and you'll see some of these images actually clearly fall apart in the realm of detail when you start to dig into them further or look at them at their highest resolution form. Though if I had to pick one that I think was sort of closest to real, I would probably say it is this one. And I don't know, maybe Dolly can generate some unique variations kind of based on that. Interesting, okay, and yeah, these are getting a little less realistic maybe as we go on. Again, they've sort of captured some of the essence of the original photo, but it's getting sort of almost sketch or oil painting like which was not exactly what I intended But I do think this original one is pretty decent at least from afar if you're sort of looking at it And since you maybe just seen one of Dolly's weaknesses Let's actually start to talk about what some of them are at least at present So as I mentioned before Dolly is generating images at sort of a moderate resolution of 1024 by 1024 pixels from afar a lot of times these will look actually very good and impressive But as you start to dig into them and sort of pixel peep the different details and differences This is often where you'll find some inconsistencies 
inconsistencies and oddities with things. You likely saw that in the different homes when Dolly was trying to generate new variations of that, but this also can include a lot of other different cases as well. Let's take this one example I did, which is a photo of a young couple on green grass with an apple tree in the background. Again, what you're going to see is from afar, a lot of these will look pretty impressive, but as you start to dig into some of the details, say maybe with their face, or maybe the foot on this one woman in this particular case, you're going to see some oddities crop up, and this is definitely where Dolly starts to show its limitations. And this definitely represents something else I've noticed with Dolly with regards to image complexity. What I found playing with Dolly is that generally the more complex the image, the more likely there is for some of these oddities. Dolly also has a lot of different things that can kind of help with different images, so sometimes saying a DSLR photo actually generates something that looks a bit more like a realistic photograph. You'll also sometimes see people use phrases like Ultra HD, which is also 4K or 8K, and tack that onto images to try to get a sharper and more clear image that Dolly will generate. But I found in certain cases eliminating complexity with just the background or just by the number of people in the photo can actually do a great deal to enhance the image that Dolly can generate. Just to demonstrate this, I'm going to generate a DSLR photo of a grandfather, let's say. And yeah, as you can see here, a lot of really good options that all look pretty realistic in a lot of different ways. But now say if I try to extend this to a father, a grandmother, and two grandchildren. I think you're going to find Dolly will generally have a much more difficult time generating all of the different faces and people in it than say when it just has to deal with generating one. And yes, I would say that is certainly the case. Again, maybe from very much afar, these images are acceptable, but you're going to see their faces and their details when you actually start to look at them closely are not quite of what I would call a usable realm in a lot of these cases. And this case or loss of detail complexity does extend to other things as well, even beyond typical photos or faces. You'll notice here in this example of a bright white room filled with posters of emojis. When you have just a few of them, these emojis actually look pretty nice and accurate, I would say, such as with this example. But if we were to go to this other more complex example where there's at least maybe triple the amount of emojis as in the other one, Dali starts to sort of fall apart when it's trying to generate at least a number of these emojis. They look sort of incomplete or odd. But now I also want to touch on something that many of these photos and images Dali's generated has avoided up until now, but that it also can't quite handle at this point, which is language. Yes, Dali does not really have a very advanced understanding of human language, at least at this point. You're going to see in many images it generates sort of a cryptic form of whatever language it's trying to generate something for. This may be usable or passable in some more, again, simple cases when you just have a couple of letters or numbers or perhaps a logo. But in a lot of cases, as you start to get more complex with things, this will not be usable. You can see if we ask Dali to generate a photo of an American road sign on a highway, we get some things that look like are perhaps accurate, like a speed limit in this case, but the text is basically unusable and just sort of gibberish. You can see this is Dolly's interpretation of what a root is in this case. Now, the last area I want to mention where I've seen Dolly sort of miss the mark is just kind of general contextual awareness with different photos and situations. Let's take this specific example of a mansion with a luxury sports car and a pool. Now, again, ignoring some of the detail elements, because as you can see, some will definitely fare better than others here. You'll see in this one particular example, the car has actually been situated in the pool and has some odd sort of grass or greenery around it. Now again, there could be cases where we want this sort of surrealism or that element to the image, but I don't know that Dali necessarily knows enough to understand this, at least yet. And that's just touching on the actual images that you can generate within Dali at this point. There are a number of different content-related policies that Dali and OpenAI have stipulated with the tool, at least as of current. To prevent abuse of the service, Dali has a lot of different stipulations around being able to use the tool to generate images of celebrities and other known figures obviously for reasons, say, of preventing deep fakes and other things like that. You'll also find in terms of uploading your own images, Dolly will not let you upload anything with essentially a person or a human face in it. And yes, this includes your own face or yourself, since Dolly has no way of being able to verify or interpret this yet. Different images depicting violence and other things, of course, also aren't allowed at this time. So I think they're going to keep the reins pretty tight on this to prevent abuse, at least until a lot more is known about this technology. The possibilities are really endless with Dolly, and we've definitely only scratched the surface with what this technology can do. And so maybe that's leading us to our next point and some of our final questions here for thinking about where all of this is heading. So is AI and Dolly the future of photography? No, but maybe in some cases. When it comes to a photographer capturing real-world moments and actual events with people in them, you cannot replace this, nor can Dolly or any AI tool actually generate that, of course. But Dolly is a very useful tool for being able to assist different graphical artists 
designers, and even photographers in trying to generate and come up with ideas quickly, and to do so at a fraction of the time it would take for an actual artist or creative to generate it themselves. Dali in its current state has the power to be incredibly useful and can actually transform some things, as I mentioned, like creative processes for folks doing storyboarding, or being able to even change the way people think about stock photography, and it could do so perhaps even today. But as you also saw, the pitfalls are certainly there to where Dali just can't do certain things very well in its current form, and it might take some time for us to get there with artificial intelligence to do so. But simultaneously, you can also think of a time when, say, maybe three to five years from now, a lot of those different issues I brought up might be completely rectified with a system like Dali or some other AI that can do image generation, and future situations where this can start to be transferred onto video and moving pictures rather than just still imagery. Dali cannot truly replace what those in these different creative disciplines can do, though it definitely will change, I think, the way we think of a lot of these things, and maybe how those in these disciplines or others tangential to them might use tools like this. And maybe all that is to say I am, yes, a little bit frightened, but certainly curious and definitely excited for what the future might hold with technologies like this in relation to what photographers, cinematographers, and others in this space can do. And so yes, that is an overview on Dolly and AI image generation overall. Do you like tech-focused, sort of nerdy videos like this? I love to geek out over this kind of thing, and if you want to see more along this line, definitely let me know in the comments below. I can certainly make follow-up videos on Dolly if folks would like, so definitely let me know if you have any questions around this tool, or maybe if you have different prompts you'd like to see generated with it. As I said before to start this, the future is here, but for now, that is all I have to say, so thanks for watching.